Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, or also known as WRTI 407 on the GMRS side of things, and I am going to be talking about GMRS today, but my target audience is not GMRS guys, it's ham radio guys. There are a lot of ham radio guys that are getting into GMRS, and that is going to continue. I've noticed in the comments section on these videos I've been putting out, a lot of parallel thinking there where people have already identified, just like I identified myself, the GMRS is a very effective tool for setting up a communications network with your non-licensed friends and family. So GMRS is, is going to be an effective, effective tool, particularly for people that are, that are prepping or setting up uh, community uh, emergency response teams, that kind of stuff search and rescue, then any number of things where GMRS is going to really start becoming a fairly powerful tool. So with more ham radio guys getting into GMRS, uh, one thing we want to avoid is obviously, you know, uh, trying to convert their, their operations into ours. Uh, you know, we're moving into their world, so we need to understand how their world operates. Now, I made kind of a jokey joke uh, in the last video that a lot of people picked up on where I talked about how the GMRS guys uh, they don't use frequencies, they use channels, don't know why they do, blah, blah, blah. Look, I, that was a joke, and I, did, I do fully understand why they use channels. Um, that's a rhetorical device to kind of move things along, and, uh, and, and it's a bit of a conversation starter. Gives me a, gives me a touchstone I can go back to later, and that was the purpose of that. Ham guys need to understand channels and why they work that way. And I think the easiest way to take that in is, to, is, although these are completely different service, but you need to look at this like CB. CBs have their channels. People know what the frequencies are, but people that started off in CB, they just know channel 19 does this, channel 14 does that, channel 9 does this. GMRS is the same way. All of these channel numbers do resolve to a frequency, but no one is going to know what you're talking about if you say 462.550. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what that means. They don't even know what channel that allocates to here. Some do, but for the most part, they're not going to know that. They're going to want to know, oh, is that GMRS 9? Uh, or actually, yeah, yeah, I think that is GMRS 9, actually. Um, but that's important. The important thing, I, I think, and, and the whole point here is we need to make sure that our radios are set up properly. Now, if you purchase a Beofeng UV9 Golf, it will come with this channel scheme installed. That channel scheme matches exactly the channel scheme on the Wushan KG935G. It's an industry standard. It's also written into Part 95 Echo. Interoperability means all these radios need to be set up identically. Now, we as ham guys, though, we... We'll take radios like this here, and we will set these up with GMRS frequencies. And if we make a mistake, and let's say we, this, for instance, this radio was programmed with this set of frequencies related to GMRS and FRS um, probably a couple years ago. Now, this is a MarsCap modified radio, and it will communicate on these channels. Now, I talk in my MarsCap video why that's an important tool to have for a search and rescue radio. If you're on, you're volunteering your services up, for instance, at Sequoia National Park looking for a lost hiker, you've been told this lost hiker is in possession of a blister pack radio that they bought at Walmart, and they bought that radio a year and a half ago. You're going to probably be able to surmise from that that it's set up with the current post-2017 channel scheme for GMRS radios. So how these channels are laid out on this radio should match what they have. Now you might have to dial around, but the chances are pretty good that if you're told, hey, they tend to operate on GMRS 9, you're good to go. But if you have your radio set up to the old standards that chirp outputs to the spreadsheet, such as what happened here, it's not going to match because in this case, GMRS 9 resolves to FRS 8 on this radio. So if somebody tells you, hey, switch your radio to GMRS 9 and see if you can narrow in on this person or get a get word out to them or get them to make some sound, you're going to be on the wrong, on wrong, I almost said frequency, you're going to be on the wrong channel. So for ham radio guys, know the standards and follow the standards. Set your radios up accordingly and set them up to match what's going on with these radios here and learn that the entire world turns on the word channel. They want you to switch to a channel. So kind of get that burned into your head. Other than that, there's not much else to know. There's some stuff that they don't like you to say or do or whatever. We'll, we'll talk about that later as far as etiquette goes. But the most important thing, if you're a ham radio guy that's moving into the world of GMRS, have your radio set up via channel. Now, again, 
This is not a radio that I recommend. You don't use an FT60 for day-to-day -day GMRS use, okay? This is emergencies only. Already did a big, old, gigantic video on that one. If you want to do GMRS and do it right, get yourself a decent GMRS radio. In the HT world, we've I've already talked about the UV9 Golf a little bit. Going to be talking next about this KG935 Golf, because this is, this is interesting. This is kind of cool, actually. So that'll probably be the next video I put out. But that was just a real quickie for the ham radio guys. Um, GMRS is a pretty cool thing. Uh, it's going to get even cooler, but... You sort of have to change just a little bit in how you approach stuff, okay? So with that, I'll bring you to a close. Thank you for listening and or watching. This is Scott, Kilo CR6, Delta Alpha Yankee in Southwest Visalia, California, also WRTI 407. Have a wonderful day.